welcome to a wonderful, wonderful Saturday, and welcome here in the Amethyst Cave to this wonderful moment. I am really, 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 really excited today. Super excited to be channeling probably one of my favorite beings to connect with, which is Pallas Athena. You know what? I won't even say probably. I will say that she is my favorite to connect with. <laughs> Absolutely my favorite to connect with. <laughs> so as you guys are all coming on, hey Muriel, hey Joe, hey Madeline. <laughs> Just wanted to go through what today is going to look like because Athena has she had quite a few things that she said to me um, just a week ago <laughs> that are going to go into today. And again, just because she is my favorite being to connect with, well, <laughs> there's always lots to talk about and I could probably spend an entire day just talking about Athena because there are so many times on a daily basis when I will just chat with her. Like last week I said Jesus felt to me very much like an older brother. Well, Athena's like my older sister. So she's the older sister that I always, always wish I could have had because I'm an older sister. <laughs> I didn't get that experience, at least in this lifetime. So she's very much like that for me. So I wanted to start off just talking a little bit about what led into today because it is part of what Athena wants to review and add to and expand upon. And I wanted to talk a little bit about who Athena is, and I'm just saying Athena, but when I, I do mean Pallas Athena, um, though whether you say Pallas Athena or Athena, by the way, it's all the same being. It's just that there have been many, many mythological stories written about the goddess Athena by the ancient Greeks, and then she was also um, written about by the ancient Romans and talked about by the ancient Romans as Minerva, but it's all Pallas Athena, who um, is one of the many wonderful Ascended Masters who are here supporting and helping us. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about who she is and my relationship with her, particularly because part of today is also uh, delving into a really exciting event that I am doing in January, finally. <laughs> it was going to happen in December. I was going to hold the introduction to the Divine, Fem Divine Feminine in December, <laughs> but I had so many ideas and there were so many goddesses stepping forward. I was like, okay, I need to move this to January just to give myself some time to process and go through things. <laughs> so that's going to come up a little bit as well and I wanted to share with you all a little bit of a sliver into some of the things that um, I'll be doing in that course today as well. And then Athena also said she has some gifts for all of us. <laughs> like. I'm really, really curious by that, by the way, because usually she's very upfront and she's very direct and tells things as it is, which I love. Um, poetry and flowery language is wonderful. It's got its place, but <laughs> I appreciate having things told to me straight up. Whatever those gifts are, she hasn't told me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious. But what has led to today has really been, um, interestingly, a whole year um, of really, really closely working with her, even more so than I ever did 
in the past because before this year she was always just there <laughs> but I was not working with her as directly and as actively as I have this year and on specific day back in February so way back at the beginning of the year <laughs> I <clears throat> was in the middle of meditation and as Athena had been doing for that past week she just dropped in felt whoosh of her energy and <laughs> she wanted me to pull out my journal and write down what she called was her charge to the light workers. And what came out of that particular session was this whole list of points of guidance that Athena wanted me to share with all light workers. Now, this was back in February. And this was still during a time when I was not fully out of the closet as a medium and I was still kind of <laughs> off in a little corner, not completely being open <laughs> about the fact that I could channel and that I connected with spirit. <laughs> so that particular charge to the light workers that I channeled from Athena ended up becoming this little video that I put together just with a bunch of text and images and it ended up on my business page A.R. Reynolds and I'm sure some people saw it but it just sat there and it has just sat there since. <laughs> and last week I was in the middle of putting together this bullet journal because it's this wonderful method of journaling that really, really helps for those of you, like myself, who have a million ideas and plans and projects and things that you want to do and you want to keep track of. And it's all generally been this big mess. For me, it's always been walls of sticky notes or sticky notes in the bathroom <laughs> or sticky notes on my kitchen table or me just filing things in the back of my mind and then it gets lost in the zillion boxes of stuff that's just in your head. <laughs> so I was putting that together and Athena popped in and we were just chatting and then she said, you know, <laughs> you never did follow through with what I wanted you to do with my charge. <laughs> you never did share it out. You never were openly speaking about it. I want you to do this because there are some things in that charge that I wish to highlight, that I wish to expand upon and explain further at this time for all of those who are in your group and all of those who follow you on your channel. It's like, okay, I've been told. So <laughs> That's what led to me setting up this particular live today, was sharing out properly that particular charge. <laughs> She's here with me right now and she says, don't hold it off. <laughs> Do not hold it off. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and just read out um, what that charge um, was that I had written down all those months ago. <laughs> then she says, she says, um, I can go into the rest of what I wanted to speak of. And then she wants to speak again. <laughs> so direct. I love it though. Okay. So this is what she said she began with be true and honest to yourself that above all else matters be kind practice patience with yourself and others roads are not built in a day love yourself 
Whatever you desire is already in your hands. Look within and you will find every answer ever needed. And cultivate communities of love and support, even for those who are not yet on the same path. Always keep your boundaries strong. They're the foundation upon which all your work is done. But do not build walls, create doors, and open for those who knock, if it be true and in your honest good. Speak your mind. Do not hide or change to suit another. But know when and where to respect another's boundaries. Always listen to the stillness regularly. It will grow into a music of your soul. Remember to laugh often and love lots. Whatever path you're on, know it is yours alone and be proud. Be confident in your steps, but do not be so proud to forget to ask for help. Remember above all that you are loved, you are made of love, this is your fire and your light. Keep it burning bright always. So that was the charge to the lightworkers that Athena relayed to me all those months ago, back in February. <laughs> and really kicked off me being a lot more open myself with the fact that um, I um, was, that I am a medium. And not only that, but also being um, proud of the fact that I am really, really connected with Athena. Because at that time, a lot of the mediums I was connecting with um, and I was getting to know, they were connecting with archangels and with Jesus and with Mother Mary and other ascended masters, but not Athena. And I felt like, okay, this is a little bit off. This is a little bit different. This is um, maybe not the direction I'm supposed to be going. <laughs> Athena came in, of course, and she was like, no, nope, this is you. This is your truth. <laughs> you need to be honest about it and you need to follow it you need to not apologize as a lot of what she also relayed in that um charge there <laughs> and it made me remember a lot of experiences that i'd had with her um throughout my life that speaking of the fact that we're on 2019 and moving into 2020 there's a whole decade that we've all now um, gone through, and I'm sure many of you have been hopefully spending some time if you can, and if you haven't, definitely find a moment to reflect back on all that you have done, all that you have been in this past decade. That's what I've just been doing. That's where the bullet journaling was coming from last week, and... Oh boy, it is amazing. It's amazing what we can all accomplish just within a year. <laughs> but look back 10 years and it's like, wow, I was a different person. Absolutely. Um, 10 years ago, as of 2020, <laughs> that was the year um, that I had my um, big crash and burn moment, <laughs> me being a little bit dramatic, um, where kind of my identity and who I was and things that I had done, things that I believed, just fell apart around me. And from that point, kind of through this past 10 years, then I've been rediscovering, okay, who am I actually now that all of that other stuff just exploded and fell apart? And who am I? And I figured that out now, 10 years later. <laughs> but it all started in that moment. And that's actually when Athena first came to me, though 
when she was coming to me at that time, I was just assuming, okay, no, it's just my overactive imagination. Like people always told me, they were like, Alyssa, you've got a crazy overactive imagination. <laughs> heard that so many times. But I wanted to mention just two of the experiences that I had um, with her when I, for the first time in my life, um, shortly after everything kind of fell apart around me, I was fortunate enough to get to go on this field school trip with um, a class at university uh, to Greece and Turkey. <clears throat> and there <clears throat> I discovered my connection with Athena. And that was my first realization of just how many lifetimes I've spent working with her and having her be there as a support for me too. And the first one happened when I was at Delphi, um, which for those of you who are not familiar with Delphi, that's where there for thousands and thousands of years was an oracle of Apollo where people would come from all around the world to um, be, to have their questions answered about whether they should do something <laughs> or where they should go and so on and so forth. Basically a ancient version of a medium. <laughs> and so I was there. And when I stepped um, into Delphi and was off the bus, um, and we just had time to kind of go around and explore um, after um, <clears throat> our professor gave a few talks and whatnot. It felt like coming home. And especially when I stepped in front of this temple to Athena that is also there in Delphi. And <laughs> she appeared in my mind, just winked at me and waved. <laughs> gave me this little smirk <laughs> just and said hello and I was like okay wow my mind is being overactive this is crazy but she feels like this sister this is um really cool <laughs> and I kind of just filed it away and forgot about it as I wandered off um in other directions and well I was there um for university <laughs> So had totally different mindset going on at that time. And I had that experience with many other locations that I visited where I felt myself transported or I met different beings. Um, and this leads me into the fact that there's a lot of us out there um, who aren't fortunate enough to necessarily be able to go to a particular sacred site, um, whether it's a natural site or it's a human-made site, um, just due to whatever is going on in our lives. And that's where um, the practices of visualization and off of that pathworking comes in, which is something that will be a part of the introduction to the Divine Feminine course that I'm doing in um, January which allows you to be in a space, to put your spirit into a space and connect with other beings and feel all those energies of that space without physically having to have to go there and be there. You don't have to go and be standing on Paternoster Row um, in London <laughs> to be able to feel like five or ten different time streams just flowing over top of each other. No, you can just imagine it in your mind and walk yourself there just through that practice of visualization. And it's something too that I used a lot even before I started actively channeling. I was unconsciously using it at first. Um, and then started more consciously using it as it was a way for um, whether your channels are totally wide open or they're a little bit open or you haven't even opened them at all and you've not 
even dipped your toe into mediumship. So no matter where you are on that spectrum of mediumship, um, doing practices of visualization and path working allow you to still be able to connect with spirit, to hear spirit, to feel spirit <clears throat> in a way that um, is just as powerful as <laughs> going about your daily life and spirit drops in and you're like, oh, hello, I was just getting groceries and <laughs> now I've got um, <laughs> Archangel Michael over here wanting to say something to me, <laughs> which yeah, has happened before. I'm in the middle of the grocery store and spirit drops in. <laughs> So this I mentioned, not only because it's something that I'm going to be doing in the class, but it's part of what um, Athena wanted all of us to be doing today. So wherever you all are, and hopefully you're in a relatively comfortable space, <laughs> if not, shift yourself if you can, <laughs> or make yourself as comfortable as you can be. And <laughs> Athena wants you, us all, just to close your eyes and she says, sink into yourselves, dear ones, sink into yourselves. Be this, imagining yourself being embraced by the earth that you sit upon, or taking deep breaths. Let yourself sink in to your being. Let all yourself sink into your being. As Alyssa has said, today I not only wished to expand upon some of my charges to you lightworkers, but I wish to give unto each of you gifts. And so, follow me now. Follow me within yourselves. Walk down a set of stairs. And come into a field. You'll find me on this field for <laughs> this is where I receive my warriors. This is where I greet my warriors at whatever stage they may be. Each of you are my warriors. So come now, come to this field, stand before me. And I first give unto you the gift of my shield. My shield that is not just protection against that which may be outside of you. No, it is protection. For all that is within you, it is the vessel through which all that is within you can be held 
and balanced and reviewed and judged will whatever is within you will it support you in your highest and best good will it support you will it be there for you or is it that which needs repair do you need to repair something that is within you do you need to show something within you love and care and compassion if so give it that love comparing compassion or is it something that you no longer need then release it let it go it may be used by another who can take those scraps that you no longer need and they can build it into their own shield for whatever you release will be transmuted into a light that another may benefit from. And as you take the shield, as you take my shield, I wish for each of you to hold in your minds this, be true and honest to yourself. Be true and honest to yourself. Be true and honest to yourself. There is no need to hold on to these stories that you may have told yourself. That no longer serve you. Be true. Hold to the truth and seek the truth. That is what I entreat each of you to do always and if you seek the truth you will always always be moving forward on your path and even if you do not know what the truth is even if you stand here now upon this field with me and you do know not you do not know what your truth is then take this time to examine each story that you have told yourself that you do tell yourself And it is through that you will release what is not your story anymore. And what you will be left with is your truth. Yes, she says, it is just that simple. <laughs> She's chuckling a little bit. Next, I wish to give unto each of you that of my spear. My spear, which is action, which is movement, which is strength, which cuts through all that you have been and all that you are, and it will leave you with only the truth.
into this, I wish for each of you to remember whatever you desire, it is in your hands. Whatever you desire, it is in your hands. Whatever you desire, it is in your hands. You hold it already. You have it already. So take up my spear that I have given. See within it. It is built. It has been fashioned. By all that you have, which is all of your desires. You have it all. When you pull back the stories you have told yourself or that you have surrounded yourself with, each desire is like a nugget of ore used in creating a sphere such as mine. It is a nugget of love, of compassion, of joy, of happiness, of excitement, of passion. These, dear ones, are the heart of your desires. And you have each of these already. You hold each of these now. I encourage each of you, if you feel you do not have what you desire, or you do not know what you even desire. Take up my spear. And step forward through all that you are. Let it guide you. And so you will meet your truth. Third, I wish to give unto each of you that of my helmet. Take my helmet, place it upon your head, wear my helmet, wear it now. It is knowledge. It is my knowledge. It is your knowledge. It is knowledge. It is knowing yourself. It is to know your truth. And it is a declaration of your truth. For coupled with my shield and my spear, each of you stands now and can stand now if you wish in your truth. Be open about your truth, to live your truth. And know with knowledge, you have it all. But here now, in this lifetime, 
and all your other lifetimes that you have experienced, this moment and all those moments, were missions in exploring your truth and all knowledge, your knowledge. And to all of this, I wish to remind each of you to always, always cultivate communities of love and of support. No matter how small the community or how large or in what field you may place the community, make it of love and support, even for those who are not yet on your path, even for those who are not yet on the same path. Cultivate a community of love and support, even for those not yet on the same path. For it is through your love and support in whatever community you are a part of that those who are not yet on your same path will have your path given to them as an option, as a possibility. They will see your path. They will see who you are, what you are. And it is through that they will be able to walk toward their truth. They will be able to live in their truth, not the truth of how they have been living. And so, do not judge those who are not yet on the same path, and do not judge those who may never be on your same path. For they will find their truth. It may not be in this lifetime for them. Or it may not be the next. But that is okay for each of you. Is here to do and to be. lights of different colors. But above all, to follow your truth, to never hide your truth. Do not be afraid of your truth. There may be much to release before you find your truth that may cause you pain, that may cause you fear, but know that I am with each of you and you may call me in to support you even more. But I have given unto each of you today gifts that each of you may wear, may walk forward in strength. In confidence in your power to uphold my charge.
to uphold your truth. That above all else. is what I entreat each of you to do. Uphold your truth and do not bend. For those who wish to work with me more directly, who call me in you can hear me, you can feel me when you bring yourself into stillness and place yourself into a space of comfort, be it a field, a room, a lake, an ocean, in your mind, go to a space of comfort. I will meet you there. But no, I am always there if you have called me. Thank you, dear ones, she says. She's stepping back a bit. <laughs> By the way, that whole time she was really gesturing quite a bit with the um, her spear. <laughs> pointing it quite a bit just at the end there she put it up <laughs> and it's now planted in the ground <laughs> Whew. wow so wow <laughs> don't know about all of you but I've got to take a little bit of a moment myself there <laughs> with that message and feeling very, very whew, um, charged up, very charged up. <laughs> but that's the thing that I love about Athena. Every time I am just randomly chatting with her, even, there are some days when I wake up and I'm like, I didn't get a lot of sleep because the fairies were pestering me through the night or just because the energy is just what it is. <laughs> And I'm, I'm like, hey, Athena, can you help me just get through the day? Can you help me stand up and just walk? And can you help me think? <laughs> she always laughs, but she's always there. <laughs> so if you haven't ever called her in, she is really, really wonderful for like anything any sort of support. She literally is like this, um, yeah, she's like this big sister who comes up beside you and is like supporting your shoulder. And it's like, yeah, hey, I can keep you standing up. I can keep you walking forward. It's no problem. I'm here. <laughs> so definitely, definitely call her in if you haven't. And for those of you who have not worked with um, opening your Claire's um, much, so you haven't taken any mediumship classes perhaps, or um, you've not done a lot of work with developing, say, clairsentience, which is feeling energy, or developing, say, clairvoyance, which is being able to see, whatever it might be. Um, doing any sort of visualization is really, really um, an amazing way, as I said before, to connect with all sorts of different energies. <laughs> and um, no matter where you are at, 
in terms of your connection with spirit. <laughs> so if you are uh, interested in connecting with more goddesses, getting to know them further and how to work with them and what they feel like and how they can help you and your own balance um, with your divine feminine, which we all have within us. We all have divine feminine and divine masculine within us. It's just another aspect of ourselves as much as our inner child is or our higher self is. And <clears throat> with the divine feminine, which that particular cl class that I'm running at the end of January is about, it's working with getting your body more in tune with nature getting your body more in tune with the cycles of nature, whether it be the seasons and how your body works with the seasons and the highs and lows that it naturally has with the seasons or the highs and lows it naturally has with the moon cycle or with the placement of the stars and the planets. So getting into a little bit of astronomy as well as your life so far. Um, whether it be right from when you were born till now, or from January 1st, 2019 till now, or just this past decade, all of that as well is part of what working with the Divine Feminine can really help to align and balance. Because each of the goddesses, as I was saying right at the very beginning, they all work in different areas. Pallas Athena is all about, <laughs> as we've explored today, truth, and she's very much a warrior archetype. <laughs> yeah. And other goddesses uh, focus on different areas. So for example, Aphrodite, who I channeled um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I can't quite remember. She is focused around love and all its different aspects. So she's more of a romance goddess <laughs> or a self-love goddess, that kind of thing. Um, whereas Kali is considered a dark goddess archetype because she is about destruction and pulling things down, which I know sounds a bit scary, but is what we're doing when we are letting things go and we're noticing, hey, we don't really want that anymore or we don't need that anymore. We're just going to let go of it. And Callie steps in and she helps to transmute that stuff that we want to let go and helps us to actually pull it totally out and just remove it. <laughs> so that's what she focuses on and what she's good for. And there's so, so, so many other um, goddesses out there uh, that you can connect with every single day. I'm always exploring another one and getting to know another one. There's so many <laughs> because there's so many different things that are part of who we are and what we do and what we're learning and what we're experiencing. So if you're interested in uh, joining the Introduction to the Divine Feminine, you can check out further details um, over on my website, arreynolds.com, just under workshops. It will be running for three days from January 31st, which is a Friday, through to Sunday, February 2nd. Um, it is $50 USD. And on all three of the days, there'll be a combination of pre-recorded video as well as live sessions. So pre-recorded videos in the morning and then live sessions happening in the evening. And all of that will be available to you, whether you're able to actually make the live session or not. And just always remembering that spirit has no time or space constraints. So whatever is 
channeled, whatever is spoken of in any moment will always have the same energy, no matter when you happen to be connecting with that particular energy. So I'm really, really excited about it. <laughs> Especially because it was Athena who nudged me to do it. <laughs> and with that, I'm just going to double check to make sure there weren't any questions any of you guys happen to have. I don't think there were. And otherwise, nope. Okay. I wish all of you a wonderful rest of your weekend. I will be popping on the group with a message from the dwarves, continuing the group's unit um, of Believe in Your Magic on Sunday. And otherwise, I am going to be off on a little bit of a winter holiday starting next week until the new year. So I'm not going to be doing any more lives. This is my last live of 2019. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I just realized that it's my last live of 2019, at least my last plan life. Who knows what might happen in the next two weeks with what spirit decides. But as of right now, I will be doing two final pre-recorded channelings. So keep an eye out on the group wall for when I put up events for those, because I will be doing those based around questions that all of you guys may have for the different beings who I'm going to be channeling, which may as well give you guys a heads up right now. Next week, I will be connecting with the goddess Persephone. And she is, since we're talking about goddesses today, uh, a goddess of spring and the underworld, kind of a goddess of change of liminal spaces, of rebirth, of um, newness. So she's a wonderful goddess to connect with at this time of year when we're in kind of this winter kind of underworld, um, darker time of the year in terms of just what the sun is doing and um, kind of that rest period that we have and that release period that we have right now, moving into a whole rebirth of a brand new year. So I'll be channeling her next week. So if you guys have any questions for the goddess Persephone, I'll be making an event for that later today and you can pop up questions to her underneath. And then at the very end of the year, I'll be connecting in with our wonderful mother Gaia to finish off the year. So again, with that, when I put up the event, you can put any questions that you have for Gaia underneath that event. But yeah, otherwise, <laughs> I wish all of you a wonderful rest of the year. And though I'll absolutely be seeing you guys around <laughs> and chatting with you guys, <laughs> this is my last live. So wonderful rest of the year. Many wishes for how these last few weeks go. And let's all bring in so much more wonderful things in the new year. It's going to be an exciting new year that we've got coming up. <laughs> all right. Aw, thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful to share this space with all of you. As always, thank you so much for joining me and Palace Athena, and I will see all of you later. Bye for now.